get dirty, take one some to the, take someone to the cleaners, don't quit. Sharon Horn Nelson here, welcome to day 1398 of What She Up To Now, documenting the journey as I transition and am, am involved in offline and online businesses. Originally started documenting my journey as I was creating my online businesses uh, and just to get comfortable doing videos and to keep track of, I've got some vision challenges, so to keep track of um, really what I'm doing, what's working, what's not. And that's turned into kind of sharing what I'm sharing every day in the other segments that I share information on. I'm trying to bring everything into one place and keep track of actually what I'm doing. So for Supersize Your Business Day, our idiom, our expression, we're doing money idioms for the month of November, just a couple more days left in November. But today's was to take somebody to the cleaners. Now this came from, of course, um, from an earlier expression to clean someone out, which meant to uh, take all their money. And then in the 1920s when dry cleaners became uh, popular and they were popping up in different communities and when they were established as a, a viable standalone business, the expression to take someone to the cleaners became more popular than to clean somebody out. But it meant the same thing. It meant to take advantage of somebody or to take all their money or to in some way harm them. So we talked about that and that I propose that that's probably not the best way to supersize and grow your business. Unless, of course, you're in some kind of a nefarious line of work. Then it's all about hurting other people to, for your own personal gains and money. Again, not proponent of that. I think that that's, you know, we, you've listened to me long enough. You know what I stand for. So uh, getting dirty was our, and it wasn't really about getting dirty. It was about getting grounded. But they, the, the lady talked about dirt. And in the spring and at the end of the day, we should smell like dirt. And that our challenge is to get grounded. So we talked very briefly about grounding in our annual challenge, all about us to do one thing every day that centers us. Uh, I actually, I like grounding. I forget about it, especially in the winter time here in Wisconsin. I'm not out walking in the, I might be walking in the snow, but I definitely have my boots on. I'm not out in the ice and the snow, so I'm not physically grounding myself. It's probably for the winter months, get one of those grounding mats or something to ground and take the electrical charge out of our bodies, but uh, never done that. I'm curious, but I've never done it. I studied it about 10 years ago following my son cardiac arrest, but never really explored it to the terms of buying products or services. I just spent more time outside walking in the lawn and walking in the, along the beach and on the sand, but uh, haven't really figured out a way to deal with it in the winter. So maybe since it have been reminded of in our centering challenge, maybe that's something I should look into. Probably should have gotten one in the Black Friday special, but I didn't. I didn't feel that great yesterday. I sort of uh, vegetated the vast majority of Black Friday and uh, just took it easy. Uh, our No Nonsense November, looking for my notebook, today was about don't quit, not quitting, do not quit. And it kind of goes against what we talked about on day 11 was know when to quit, know when to let something go, know when to walk away, know when to stop doing something. And this is just the opposite. And I reminded us and reminded myself, we live in this polar universe where sometimes we need to deal with both sides of a situation, both sides of a coin, two different ways of looking at things. In some situations, we need to know when is the appropriate time to let go and quit. And other times, I say the vast majority of the times, once we commit to wanting something, we commit to that thing. Not how we're going to get there. We don't We don't get ownership and, and get invested in, I have to do it this way or it's not going to count. We, we think about what we want, the big goal, the big objective. We commit to that. And then we know that we're going to have to try different ways and different strategies and different processes and different techniques for getting to that end goal of what we want. So if I want perfect health, I might try... A, a certain type of diet and find out that it doesn't work for me. Well, I still want to obtain this certain level of health. I'm not going to quit figuring out how to get there just because one thing I tried didn't work for me. Or I might try a supplement or something and find I did that not too long ago. Last spring, I tried a new supplement for about three months. And I'm like, yeah, this doesn't work for me at all. I'm not using it anymore. But I, I did use it for three months as directed and realized this isn't something that's moving me in the direction I want to go, the direction I want to go for my health. So I just stopped doing it. So you have to know when to quit doing something. You still have to know when to try different things and give things a long enough chance to allow them to work out for you, for you to learn the lessons you need to learn to achieve the things that you want. So I'm a big believer in not quitting. Uh, I probably hang on to things too long. I probably do things way too long. I was thinking a couple things this morning that I have 
been investing in for five years, maybe five years. And I really haven't done anything with it. I mean, I've done a few things with it and played with it, but never really done anything to recoup my investment. And it's time to either fish or cut bait, either decide I'm going to do something to, to number one, recoup, use this, the tool and um, recoup my investment, or I'm going to let it go. Uh, and we need to know, and we need to balance those things, but it can't be just because we tried one or two things and it didn't work out the way we imagined in the first place. Commit to the goal and then do what you got to do to get to the goal. Um, I'm sure I could probably talk about that all day long about quitting and not quitting and knowing which and when to do the right thing for you. It's always about doing the right thing for you, right? It's always about how does it make you feel? Is it moving you in the direction you want to go? And that's how you determine. That's how you filter through and decide, well, is this thing right for me? Is this relationship right for me? Well, how does it make me feel? If your relationship or your job or your business or your uh, clothes or your car or your home or anything makes you feel absolutely lousy, rotten, and bad, there's something wrong. It, it's you, you, you don't feel that way for no reason. There's something wrong and you need to go about changing and fixing it or moving into the direction that you want to go. But it's not right for you. It might be perfectly right for someone else, but it's not right for you. And that's okay. Uh, so I love, I love those questions. Two good questions to keep in mind all the time. How does it make me feel? And is it moving me toward what I want or away from what I want? If you ask yourself those two questions and just lived your life based on that, your life would be much better than it is and would always be continually improving and moving you in the direction you want to go. All right, that's enough for today. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I am hanging out with my amazing baby granddaughter today, and I wish you an awesome day. Again, questions, concerns, comments, share in the comments below or ask. Uh, otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.